Stevie once sat right across from me and went, <laughs> you know, and uh, I went, do it again. And he went, no. And he, went, he said, uh, actually said, no. Show me? Hey, I'm Dan Canner, and welcome to Guitars in Hand, the video series where I sit down with some of the world's greatest guitar players. Today I talk blues and Stevie Ray Vaughan with Colin James. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, comment. All right. What was your first guitar? The first acoustic I got, my mom bought me when I was 13, and it was made by a Regina Luthier named Peter, Peter Allen Soch, who still makes beautiful guitars and mandolins today. Oh, yeah. And um, first electric yes. was an Epiphone. Okay, uh, Epiphone kind, what? Uh, it was just an Epiphone, like, um, I can't even tell you what it was now, but I fell in love with it at the music store, and I used to go just stare at it. And, yeah. Um, and it was my, you know, my guitar for a while, and I yeah. you know, did its job. And who were your early heroes? Oh my, oh my God, Carlos Santana, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. uh, Peter Green. That sounds good. <laughs> so speaking of your influences, I wanted to put you on the spot a little. So like Stevie Ray, can you show us, I mean, not necessarily his songs, but can you play us a little influence that you pulled from him? I mean, I... Well... I guess it's all in his fingers, and, and yeah. I, I think, like most people, what he did so well, well, everything, everything. Yeah. Unworldly, you know. But it's the way he got the for the the um, Albert King thing, you know. When I first heard uh, "Let's Dance," you know, uh, I I just went, "Oh my God!" They got Freddie King to play on a on a David Bowie song. Isn't yeah. that fantastic? Yeah. When I found out it wasn't for, uh, Albert King, excuse me, yeah, I went, Albert. I went, "Wow, uh, that's that's someone else. That's not. I, it was sounded so much like him." And it's like a, it's that five fret band, you know. And I still don't have it, like. Stevie once sat right across from me and went, <laughs> you know, and uh, I went, do it again. And he went, no. And he went, he uh, said, actually said, can no. You show me, I don't know how to well, do it. Well, and I still can't get it right. Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's it. Bending with your first finger? <laughs> One thing that you do that I love, I mean, it's, it feels very Stevie Ray influenced, is how you fall off a note at the end, you know? Oh. Oh, like, can yeah. you show me? That like those fast little, little, little tra yeah. Or my favorite these days is. And then you go. <laughs> you hint at the four a little bit. That's one of my favorite tricks these days. Uh, but um, on Watch Out, I do that a bit with a... You know, those little tiny yeah. things at the end, a little bit of like the colorful thing at the end. Uh, I love that about him. And uh, uh, just the physicality of his playing was so insane. But he never overplayed to the part you went... You know, it was never like that with him. He'd take the fifth pass, and you'd go, surely he couldn't take this higher. <laughs> and he would, and he would just go, 
yeah. it was it was absolutely breathtaking. Yeah. Uh, I'll never, right I'll never forget any time I was in the same room with him because, and I wish when he, when I wanted to learn that five foot bend, because he did it so effortlessly. The reason Albert King could do it was because his high string was here, so Albert King was uh, upside down. down, and was he upside down and backwards, or was he just backwards? But anyway, all, and he had very thin strings, so when he went on a high string, he was pulling from the bottom. Yeah. So those big stretches were pretty easy to emulate yeah and you know the only way to get is to get behind it you know oh, right amazing. or you just i think stevie did it mostly with brute strength yeah i think he would sometimes just lean in on his first finger but I never got it right, yeah. and it still bothers me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Man. I was wondering if I could throw some examples at you. I have some questions about specific parts. Okay. Are you up for I guess, demonstrating? Yeah. Sure, man. All right, so I'm going to go way back. Um, five long years. Um, I love the thing where you just do the pull-offs at the end. You're not I even know. picking. God, it's been so long. I mean, doing it in such a way for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you hear a bit of like the... Uh, it's like the, you know, where he's like... Oh, right! <laughs> yeah, I yeah, love that. I love so, that. Well, Waterfall by Hendrix, yeah. all that lovely stuff. And uh, I, to me, it's my favorite thing of Hendrix. I, I yeah. just love when he plays those that, that kind of stuff. Stevie, the Stevie was the same, same. way. Can you... Can you, do you mind playing? Uh, uh, that That's kind of thing, is. you mean, yeah, just in just, general? just in general. I'd love to hear you play. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, I tried to do that a little bit when I was doing Speechless, I think, you know. The, you know. Yeah, it takes a song to kind of... Yeah. I learned everywhere I could do that. Like, like all yeah. those, like everywhere on the neck. Oh, I yeah, I know. Like I little, love those. Just came back. There's a very, there's like a bend before you go right back into the third chorus, into the last chorus that oh, God. is crushing. I know this is very specific. The way it the way it so resolves. Just the last bend right before going in. Oh my god, I don't even, I don't <laughs> even right. know. What was the fast thing that you, like that did it did that chromatic thing? Uh well it, yeah, so uh, 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 Can you, you just, teach me that? I guess I'm just what uh, I like I mean I could never get that like I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just rolling the Or what? Whoa, you're up high there. Oh, you're here. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, but the it's way so. you should, that's I called that the butterfly. You that's know. That's like you know. <laughs> that kind of thing. That one's always, you gotta really lean into that one because you gotta go so high on yeah, those last yeah. notes. Sometimes I'm just like, ah! I mean, this is so hard to get, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny. That, you know, who would have thought that uh, I'd play that solo? I don't often play solos the same, but that song I keep pretty much like the original. Yeah. Can you teach me um, the end, uh, six to six, the way it ends? Do you remember the, the ending? I'm uh. really into, like, those. That one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I that, love that. <laughs> that kind of playing is so fun, you know. I love playing that kind of stuff, and those little big band records was kind of when I first started getting off on that kind of thing, you know, yeah. playing a little bit behind the beat, you know, and staggering things a little bit, yeah. and um, that, I mean, that that whole songbook, 
the little big band songbooks probably got 80 songs in it alone yeah. now. And it's, it's hard to keep track of them all, but uh, we haven't done a concerted little big band thing for a while. So. Yeah. A lot of my friends are always curious like about this mm. and this. Yeah. Can you give us like a little two minute lesson on why you <laughs> would, you know, use a certain pickup for a certain sound? Yeah, Hendrix, you know, the neck pickup, uh, uh, you know. Nice for that throaty. The Hendrixy thing is always nice on the neck pickup. Um, but you want to get that Knopfler thing, you know. <laughs> He tends to be the out of phase pickups. Yeah. I very rarely ever go to my treble. Same. Yeah. Although Even I do on, on my gold top. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I do. Because it's got that bite, but without as much bite as the strat will get. I do if I'm like super gained out. I'll yeah. go here, but otherwise, even rhythm I'm playing on. Yeah. Yeah. They're always more forgiving, for sure. I barely go there. I don't ever go to the middle pickup hardly yeah. ever. Same. And tone pots, I'm the worst. Like, <laughs> I wish. I was good at using my tone pots. And it's something I'm trying now to be yeah. better at because it's right there. Yeah. But you know how live is. You're like, you get, in, you get in the moment and then it's like, where's that reef? And you reef off everything. Yeah. But I'm trying to learn how, if I'm feeling like I'm getting too many highs out in the house or whatever, yeah. I'm trying to learn just to be good and try to roll it back. But it's hard to remember, I find, you know, yeah. you're singing and you're playing and, and the pedals, yeah. Pedals, everything. Yeah. Gear, I love gear and you I hate it. gear. What is your uh, like desert, like an, uh, deserted island pedal, guitar and amp? <laughs> well, I think a deluxe, like a deluxe, you can never lose. Yeah. It, they're just, you know, I, I don't, like I have two deluxes and, I, and right now I'm using um, divided by 13 and, oh, and a couple matches. Yeah. But. I've done whole tours with. Just with a deluxe. I just popped. We put two. We strapped two together on one tour, and cool. no, you know it's harder on the big stages. But, yeah, yeah. But boy, yeah, they're great. And I guess yeah. that and a tube screamer, because you know tube screamers get you through a lot. Yeah. I, the same answer. I yeah. Oh. Yeah. You might want to have reverb on a desert island after a while. It's like I need reverb. <laughs> Where's the one last coconut? Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the other episodes. And if you like what you see, please comment, like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.